the leadership we have in Imam Wallace D. Muhammad. Takbir. 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 I'd like to present to you our leader, your brother and friend, Imam W. Dean Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Peace to you. Assalamu alaikum. We praise God. Alhamdulillah. You're on the I mean, the praise is for God, the Lord, sustainer, sustainer of the universe, of all the worlds. <coughs> We witness that he's one and there is nothing like him. As God says in his book, the Quran, Laysa Kabithli Hishay. There is not anything at all like him. <clears throat> and he exists, exists alone, needing nothing from his creation. This is what he said to himself in the Quran, in our holy book. He exists alone, alone, needing nothing from his creation. And he says that the blood we sacrifice, the animal or the blood that is sacrificed, does not reach him. But our obedience reaches him. The only thing that reaches him is our obedience. So we can't, <clears throat> we can't take up a collection today and give it to Allah. That won't reach him. The money won't reach him. But our good intent, our obedience to him, reaches him. <clears throat> so he needs nothing of this creation. Then what is the creation for? If it's not for God to use to feed on, to benefit by, or from. It's for us, it's for human beings. But not just any human beings. God says in the Quran, who has forbidden my servants, my faithful servants, the good things, the good and useful things of creation? He said it is for them. It is for them. So this world is created for God's true, sincere, devoted servants. That's what it's created for. And he wants us to be obedient so that we get the benefit. He has designed this creation to give the benefit to those who will be obedient to the designer. If you're obedient to the designer, you get the benefit of the design, the creation, in its order. And purpose. And he said that I have not created gin or men, gin or men, except to worship me. And to worship is a translation in English. It means serve me, to serve me. And we know we've heard of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of, of uh, the New Testament that he said he was in the world to do what? to be about his father's business. And that's to serve his father. And this is a term from Christianity, not from Islam. A term for God, another term for God. The father, the heavenly father. And so he, <clears throat> he was in the world to be about his father's business. That's what his, that's what his purpose was in the world. To serve his God. To serve the God that sent him. So I just said that to say that the Bible is no different than the Word of God, the Quran, when it comes to identifying what is our purpose in this creation. Our purpose is to serve God. To serve God. <clears throat> 
then God says also, is not the creation and the command for God? The two, the two are associated together. Is not for God both the creation and the command? If I have produced something, I have the right over I have rights over it. If I have created something in the business world, I have rights over it. I'm entitled to rights over that. I'm entitled to instruct other people how to use it. I'm entitled to um, tell the market what, what its use is, what's the proper use of this thing is, what is the proper use of it, what its purpose is. Because I designed it, I created it, I have that right. So God says, is not for God both the creation and the command over it? So everything in creation is designed or created to give service to God, to answer the purpose for which it was created. Man then is here on this earth to answer the purpose for which he was created. And if we accept that, the world yields its treasures up to us. The creation that is, not the artificial world, not the man-made world, the creation, and even the man-made world too. It, yes, yes, even the man-made world, because it has no reality except in creation. No matter how fictitious it is, no matter how artificial it is, no matter how mythical it is, whatever, it got its form too out of the creation that God did, the real world, the real world that God did. So everything will yield to us. And this is the teachings of the Qur'an, this is the teachings of God to us in the, in the Qur'an. That he made the man and made everything in creation to yield its benefits, its treasures, its benefits, its utility, etc. To man, so that man would cooperate into the society of human beings and further advance the state of the human community or the state of the human society. This is the purpose of it. Allah says, God that is, says in the Quran that he made the rivers to do that, the mountains to do that, and the rivers to do that. And God says, and he made the sun and the moon to do that. The sun and the moon. It's a pity that that glorious age of Islamic rising in the time and immediately after the time of our Prophet in the immediate centuries after the, the birth of our Prophet Muhammad and his mission pitied at that time didn't continue in his glory. If it had, we would be the leaders in industry, in science, not to mention culture, ethics, etc. But we would be the leaders, Muslims would be the leaders in industry, in science, in technology, etc. Something happened. We didn't, we didn't keep the connections. Who are you to say that? You don't have any degrees from college or universities. Who are you to say that? You're right, I don't have any degrees from college or universities. 
but I have a degree from the creation God made. I have a degree from the universe, not the university. And I thank God for guiding me, having mercy on me, and guiding me so that I would get what I love. I always loved creation, nature, creation. Science. I always loved it as a young boy because of my love. And it still is. It is my love. <clears throat> but I have found a, a higher reality now. So I appreciate the purpose for which these things exist more than I appreciate these things per se. And they exist serve the will of God, the plan of God. So God is not only one who, who wills, have will, God also had a plan. And his plan was <clears throat> seen when the creation was seen. Or when the creation is seen, we see his plan. The great minds in scripture of ancient times, the earliest days of man's search for reality, or search for truth. We read of the great mind saying that these things that are working, operating in creation, in the skies and in the earth, or as the Bible says, in the heavens and in the earth, speak of God's glory and speak of his design, his plan. That's how they came to know God through his works. Now you will never know Michelangelo, the great artist and painter of Italy, unless you've seen his works. And you can't know him as persons who know something about art. So the less knowledge you have of art, especially that kind of art done by Michelangelo, the less you will know him. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't. I thank God I was never like most people. I was not. I've never been like most people. Most people just jump to conclusions. They know nothing about how I'm at. And they want to sit in the seat and grade you. And you're actually teaching how I'm at. They want to grade you. But they don't, they don't know anything about how They'll tell you when you finish, yeah, I like the presentation you made. I gave you a C. <laughs> I never go to jump I never jump to the conclusion that what a person's gonna say to me has no value, has no worth. I give them a chance to speak to me. And I listen. My tendency is first to believe that if they want to speak, they got something to say. Now if they speak, there's nothing come out but Then I have a right to say, I have to leave now. I'm sorry I can't stay here and hang around and listen to you anymore. But at least give the fellow a chance. Respect the person, respect every person. Don't jump to conclusions, don't make judgments in areas of where you don't have any knowledge, prior knowledge. You have no prior knowledge, so why judge the person? 
Are you not qualified to judge them? So don't try. Don't attempt to. Judge only what you are qualified to judge. Praise be to Allah. Yes. <clears throat> the Quran is a, is a guidance. Guidance for the God-fearing. That's what Allah says. Guidance for the God-fearing. Guidance for those who fear to disobey God. Guidance for those who love to obey God. Guidance for those who are ashamed to disobey God. All that meaning, all those meanings are in Tukwai. Tukwai. The people who have that Tukwai are called Muttaqeen, plural. Those who have taqwa, the muttaqeen. Who then, lil muttaqeen? It is guidance for the muttaqeen. Guidance without doubt. Guidance without doubt. This book, there is no doubt in it. It is guidance for the muttaqeen. That's what God says in his book, the Quran. But what we miss as a majority of people in religion, I'm speaking Muslim now, I'm talking about Islam. What we miss is that Islam is just what the memams and the Scholars are saying it is. It is a comprehensive plan for human life, establishment, and unending progress on this earth. It's a timeless work, meaning that time will not decide its change our device will not make it insignificant one day, or as some people have charged, irrelevant. It will always be relevant. It will become more and more relevant as society becomes more and more advanced. On the contrary, it will become more and more relevant as society becomes more and more advanced. Why? Because it is revelation from the law of the worlds. And that Lord is my Lord. My Lord. Some of us think the Christians have a personal God, a personal Savior, but we don't. We do. We have a personal God. We have a personal Savior. Our God is with us individually and collectively. Our God is with us singular, with us as single devoted persons and is with us as a community of devoted people. God is with us. God is, God is with us when we're alone. Nobody is there. God is with us. And if we are sincere in our devotion and love for him, he's with us as our protecting friend. That's what he says. He is the protecting friend of the believer, the devoted believer. He's with us as a protecting friend. And he says, if my servants, when my servants ask about me, tell them I am near. I'm near. So that means he's always near. He's never far from you. God is always near to you, to me, to all of us. Muhammad the prophet prayers and peace be upon him when he was without support from a mass of people or from a group of people, when he was almost alone, his wife and his, uh, uh, his cousin 
and his friend. May God be pleased with the companions of the prophet. When he was alone by himself and no one was with him but his friend, his companion, Abu Bakr, a Siddiq. And uh, he told Abu Bakr, the Meccans were out to kill him. They were seeking him to kill him. And they were fleeing from them, going to Medina. And what did he say to his friend when there was only two of them? Just two of them. He said, God is with us. God is with us. And then later he said, this is his saying, wherever there is two or three me, God is the next number. God is the third or the fourth. <laughs> he said, and that goes for any number higher or lower. Huh? God is with the individual person. Now, you know, you don't have to have, most of you all, you don't need anybody to teach you that. You just need somebody to teach you that that's Islam. To believe that is Islam. That's all you need. You, 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 you came from bad, bad times on this earth. And you know you didn't have nobody but God to turn to many of the times, many times in your troubles. You had nobody to turn to but God. So nobody needs to tell you to believe in God as a personal friend, as a personal savior, as a protecting a friend. No, you don't need that. That's, that's, that's your life. That's the way you live. And you start speaking Arabic and you forget it all. <laughs> start speaking a little Arabic. You know how to give a few greetings in Arabic. And you forget it all. You forget the real relationship that you once had with God. And in Islam, we want you to know it even more than you did before. Says God is closer to him than his juggler name. Yes, God is closer to the man than his juggler name. Juggler name is in the neck, it's taking the, the, the blood to the brain. If you cut it, the conscious goes. No more consciousness. That's your life artery. He's closer to you than your own life. That's what God is saying closer to the human being than his own life source that he's, that he's existing on as a, as a mortal being flesh and blood being God is closer to him than his own life blood that flows to his brain and keeps him conscious how do we know the blood keeps you conscious shake the head up too much the blood gets shaken you go out you go out, you ain't, you're not conscious anymore. Don't have to bust the, bust the brain, you don't have to damage the brain, but just give it a quick shake, shake the blood up real fast in your head, violently, and you fall down out. Pass out. But you don't need that. The pressure gets too high in the head, you pass out. Blood pressure, get too high, pass out, get dizzy, fall out. <clears throat> So we know that the, the blood is associated with the consciousness. The life of the brain is consciousness. The life of the intellect, consciousness. And God says he's closer to, to, to him, the man, the servant, than his own shell of the vein. Is it not for God to command the one who has created? Is it not his right to also have command? We Muslims, as a community, how do we differ from the world societies? What are some important ways that we differ from the world society that we know? 
beginning with the United States of America, this great society we call America, the United States of America. How do we differ from that man? If we are Muslims, true to the name, we never accept that anything is supposed to be out of God's reach, out of God's, out from under God's authority. Nothing. Nothing. We believe that the whole life is under God, under the rule of God. The whole life and the whole life of the individual and the whole life of the society, of the community, of people on this earth, we believe that it's un so supposed to be under God. So we can never license a sin. We can never give a license to sin. That's how we differ with other societies. Other we can't license sin. We can't license a thing that God has forbidden. We should be aware of our own identity. We should be aware of our own selves and our true picture. So we know a Muslim from a non-Muslim. We know a Muslim from a worldly person. We are not worldly people. We can't let the secular overrule the spiritual. No. I said overrule the spiritual. The secular never gets rid of the spiritual. The secular just takes over the spiritual. And your spirit is supposed to be for God. Your spirit is supposed to be under God. The secular world takes over the spirit. You're still spiritual, but under the rule of the secular. Not the religious world. Our spirit. And God said in his holy book that he spoke to the angels and he said to them, surely I am about to make or I am making a mortal, a mortal person, a mortal made of, they translated, sounding clay. Sounding clay. From the essence of the earth. I'm about to make a mortal. About to make a mortal that will be influenced and be shaped by influences. About to make a model that can be influenced and be shaped by influences from, they translated, black stinky earth or mud. No, I don't. I say they translate it. That doesn't mean that that's the way I would translate that. That's what I'm saying to you. The meaning I may differ with the translation. The word hamayim is a word rich in meaning. It means that it has heat, it's warm, Hamayim, it has heat, it's warm. And it also can mean black, means black, that, is, that it has dark color. Could mean black. Now, where does the mean black, meaning black, come from? You want to call something black in Arabic, you'll never use that word. It wouldn't be proper speech, proper language. So where gets that word black? How do they associate black with it? Because scripture that came before us said, Ham is Egypt. And Egypt is in 
the black continent, on the black continent. So that's where influence comes from on the, on the term, the meaning of the term, into the meaning of the term. That's half. And then the next word comes describing this mortal. Are you all familiar with the topic today? In case anyone missed it, let me give it to you. I'm about a third of the way into it. Islam, Mother Nature, the human brain, productive life. That's the, that's the topic today. A mortal that can be influenced and shaped by influences. This model is going to be warm-natured, Hamayim, warm-natured. Some say they made, that the man was made of red clay, R-E-D, red clay, like blood, to make a connection with the blood. But another word is used too, mesnoon. The term mesnoon. Now what does a mesnoon mean? What does this mesnoon? That this mortal that God is going to make will not only be open to influences and be shaped by influences, but this mortal will conform to certain trends, certain trends, certain behavior, certain behavior over a long period of time, a pattern of behavior over a long period of time. This mortal is going to be governed his shape, his behavior by tradition, by tradition. So he will have a traditional behavior, not just a temporary behavior. The influence comes and stick in him and he conform to this now like some of you, you're here while I'm speaking and you're conforming now. Some of you are not conforming at all. But <laughs> you're conforming now. But you go out there and as soon as you get out there, the mind's gone. The mind that you had here is gone. Some of you now. Some of you. The mind you had here is gone. So you were responding to influences and being shaped in your spirit or in your mind or whatever while you were here like a quick charge on the battery. But as soon as you leave here, the quick charge is taken off and the battery is not running anymore. The battery is not serving the running the, the vehicle anymore. It did, it didn't, didn't stay. But this creature that God is talking about, he's telling the angels he's going to make, this creature is, 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 is going to be influenced by, by, by influences that will make an imprint and it will go away <laughs> or someone will come and do something to it and remove the, the imprint, change the shape. But no, he's going to be influenced by influences and conform to influences and he will hold his shape. His shape will resist attempts to take him out of that shape. He's going to be molded into a form and over a long period of time conforming. It's going to become permanent for him. It's going to become his creation for not only him but for his children. It shall become the, the family line. 
traditional form. Traditional form. And don't we have the traditional form of our prophet, the Sunnah? Isn't that the necessary, a must, that we not only conform to our perceptions and our ideas of what Islam is, but overriding that is the established perception of how Muhammad conformed to the word of God. Hmm? Why is this being said to the angels? The angels responded, they liked it. <laughs> the angels responded, they liked it. And God told them to yield, submit, make sense there. Now you know we make sense there when God speaks, not just not just in our prayers, but certain places where God speaks, we are authorized, ordered to make, commanded to make such that, following the true tradition of our God. Right? We have to make such that. So God is speaking now to the angels, and what he was saying required such that. Just like when we read the Quran and certain things God says at certain points, we have to stop reading the Quran or recall that we have to make a one sense or two sense when we finish. Right? I usually stop right there and make sense and then continue to read. Yes. So the angels, when they were told to make sense that, they submit, they make the sense that. But Iblis refused. Now understand, more than the jinn form of Iblis, Iblis was one of the jinn. This is the teaching of Quran, teaching of God. Iblis was one of the jinn. And he was the leader of the angels. He refused to, to make sense that when God told, told them of his plan to make a mortal man, a mortal human being. He refused to make sense that. So, so uh, to refuse, he had to have what we have. The right to personal opinion. Angels have no such nature. They're not in their nature to have their own opinion. They don't go by their own opinion. They go only by God's instructions, God's command. How we know that from the Quran also. That they follow every command of God. Not their own. So the jinn being made like us, uh, capable of reasoning and having all his own opinion, He rushed to judgment and judged the value of this creature before he had even seen his purpose in the earth manifest. He just was told of his nature. God just told him of the nature of this creature he's going to make. And the police rejected him. See, he rejected and refused. And he refused by me and became arrogant, puffed up with self-importance, puffed up with self-importance. And he said, I refuse to make sense to this that you are making that can be influenced and shaped by influences. This that you make that can be formed by influences. You made me a fire. That's what he said. 
Now you know fire does not yield to be shaped by, by influences unless you put it in prison. You have to put fire in prison. If you let it out, you leave it on its own, no. It will try to burn the container up. Can't burn it up, it'll make it swell up and burst. It just doesn't yield to be, it doesn't accept to be disciplined by something without force being put on it. You got to lock it up. He refused. What did God say? God said, when I have breathed into him of my spirit, of my spirit, God said, very personal, God means it very personal. He didn't say our spirit. He didn't say, when I have breathed into him of our spirit. No. God says, when I have breathed into him of my spirit, Make such that to him. Make such that. Why says that? What is such that for us? You cannot make such that without putting your forehead and nose to the ground or to the floor, to the to the to the to the to the, to the uh, floor level. the level that your feet is upon. You must put your no head, forehead, and your nose on the level of the sole of your feet in order for you to complete the session. You don't, you don't do session without doing that. Why is it so important to put the nose there? Because scripture said, before the Quran, and he breathed into the nostrils. Huh? He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living soul. Him both the creation and the command. Then the creature that was having a tendency to judge by his own logic to judge by his own perception of logic, to judge by his own judgment, or his own rule for judgment, was denied. Then he became arrogant in God's presence, thinking himself more important than he was. And he said to God, okay, since you have really done this thing to me, shame me before my inferiors. I'm going out and I'm going to work against this creature of yours. And when I have finished you won't find but a few with you. So he then challenged God's plan and indirectly challenged God. Not directly, indirectly. Challenged God. It's okay. Now, is he challenging God as an enemy of God? 
No. That's why never we read in the Quran that Satan is the enemy of God. He's, and he can't be guilty of anything except what he has in himself. No matter how we see him or perceive him, he himself can't be judged for anything that he hasn't done. So since he never said that God was his enemy, he always took the position that I know best how to serve you. That was always his position. That I know best how to serve you. Now why don't you leave it to me? You gave it to me, you let me get here where I am. And why don't you leave it to me? Now he wasn't a devil yet. He wasn't a shaitan yet. <laughs> He was just disobedient. No next step, God's plan for man. And God's plan for man is that man is going to be the one responsible to me, directly to me. Not through you, at least. But directly to me, he's going to be responsible. And I'm going to trust him with freedom. Free will, his own opinions. I'm going to trust him with that. And when I, I'm not saying you're 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 you're, you're, you're totally wrong, you please. <laughs> That's your opinion, according to your own perception of what I've introduced to you. But I know what's going to happen down the road, and you don't. He's going to get fed up with his own opinions. He's going to be beaten down by his own opinions. And he's going to struggle in the dark and say, Oh God, show me your way. And I'm going to respond to him. And when I have breathed into him of my spirit, makes sense. By himself, no. But he's not made to be by himself. This creature I have designed is made to be with his God. Not by himself. He's not only going to have himself to govern himself, he's going to have my will and my purpose and my spirit in him. And you don't have that, you please. <laughs> you have it outside of you, <laughs> not in you. A mortal flesh and blood human being with common human life, a common human nature. That's what God said he's going to make and put in authority. Make responsible in the earth. That person responsible for, for, for authority. For authority. That's the, authority is a responsibility. It's not a possession. It's a responsibility. It's not an entitlement as a possession or as an ownership. You don't own authority. You're supposed to carry authority. So he's going to make this creature, and this creature is going to be made to be responsible and have responsibility for authority. And that authority is to utilize whatever God has created including the sun and the moon, as I mentioned earlier, so that he also made the sun and the moon to yield their services or their utility or their usefulness to that man. It has more than one application, we know that. It has application in the spiritual realm, has an application in the material realm, in both. <clears throat> Now look at the term that's used. 
Did we did we talk about Miss Noon? No, no. We didn't? No. Yes we did. You missed it. <laughs> and I'm not gonna go back for it. <laughs> now, you think about it. You'll get it later, inshallah. Now, now, he's, God says, first before breathing into his, him of his spirit, God says, and when I have, so way to who? So way to who? When I have, so way to who? Before he says his spirit, to breathe into his spirit. When I have, so way to who? And the translation is, when I have, duly proportioned to him. Hmm? When I have duly proportioned to him. At first he might think his uh, intelligence is in his productive organ. Because he's an evolving creature. He's an evolving creature. He may think his intelligence is in his feet first. And then in his knees. And then in his heart. He won't finally realize that it's in his brain. It's in his brain. <laughs> and when I have duly proportioned him, taking the clouds and put them where they belong. The clouds supposed to be down here. Not up here. It's supposed, it's, it's supposed to be clear blue all the time. <laughs> but he struggled to keep the heavens clear. <laughs> and keep the clouds below the heavens. The lower heavens. When I have duly proportioned him. Mm. And have breathed into him of my spirit. Spirit for what? Spirit for the direction in his life. When I have breathed into him the spirit for the direction that his life should take. So that he doesn't just follow a logic. But his life follows it. It becomes his spirit. It becomes his life. It becomes his direction for his life out of conformity, out of conformity, out of a will to stay fixed in the position I put him in. Hmm? Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duly proportion him. I'm going to put him in the form that he should be in. And after he gets there, then I'm going to breathe into him of my direction for him. And it's going to become his own lifeline. It's going to become his own impulse, his own motivation, his own motivation. It's going to become habit for him without thinking. He and his children shall become traditionally my obedient servants. Isn't that beautiful? Because we can see it, can't we? When we look at the best of the followers of, of Allah and the Quran and Muhammad, we can see it. Too many of them are out of form, but many of them are in form. No matter where you go on this earth, you're going to find many Muslims in form. Praise be to Allah. Now, look how God told them to make sister. God didn't say just make sister. Because I'm going to make a creature. I'm telling you what I want from my creation when I'm showing you this model I'm going to make. Now I'm asking you that think yourself higher above this that I'm going to create in the earth. I'm asking you to do what he's going to do of his own will and nature. When I tell him to make sense, he's not going to do it when he wants to do it. 
He's going to drop down and do. He's going to drop down to set. So he said to them, drop down to set. Yes, the word means drop down. Don't hesitate, don't think about it. Hit the floor. That's exactly what it means. Hit the floor, hit the earth. The earth is the floor too. If it's out there and you're standing on, that's the floor. Hit the floor. Don't have any second thoughts when I'm speaking to you. That's what God is saying. That's why he asked Satan when he, got, when he, when he, when he had a difficulty with it. He said, what's, what's gotten into you? <laughs> that you don't make sense of it. To what I have authorized. And we told him, say, my luck. What's gotten into you, boy? That you don't make sense there when I order you to make sense there. That's exactly what it means, my luck. I mean, what's the matter with you? What's gotten into you? Or what's with you, as we say <laughs> in English? What's with you, man? That's what God's saying to the to this to this belief. My life. What's with you? What's gotten into you? Jealousy. That's what it was. Jealousy. One of the major sins in all the great religions. Jealousy. He said. Fakau lehu, fakau lehu. Drop down and says that, Sajidin. Drop down and says all of it together. Don't have any hesitation here. Some hitting the floor before others. Fakau lehu, Sajidin. Drop down all together like one man, like one person, like one thing. In unity, when I command you. That means don't think about it. Don't let your own thoughts come into it. Your thoughts are made to come into creation, not into the creator. This is the creator speaking. Do you recognize that it bleeds? It bleeds. He knew that. He knew that. He knew that. He knew that. But he wasn't behaving as though he knew it. Because he had another perception of the reality. He didn't know the reality God made. That's why he wasn't down here in the business of the earth. He was up there where a little business is taken care of. Islam, Mother Nature, the human brain, Productive life. So actually we have four, four concerns in that statement. Islam. And then we have a colon. Meaning what we want to talk about in Islam is what follows. Mother nature, the human brain, productive life. Three. Three things. Three things. Mother nature, human brain, productive life. Now, to save a whole lot of time, the human brain does not develop until it has contact with creation. It cannot develop without contact with, cre I mean conscious. Contact, because that's what it is. It's a conscious entity. It cannot have a development for itself until it has contact with creation, God's creation. If you have any awareness in your mind at all, it came from God's creation. There's no way for your mind to have one single word in it without having contact with God's creation. You yourself, you're God's creation. The members in your household, God's creation. Then the environment, the house and its environment, God's creation. 
the outdoors, God's creation. Now, what do you, what, what can you think of that can't be connected back with God's creation? Say yes, we know how they came to this law. It's out here in the creation. You might dream you saw a four-headed cat with ten tails. That's another monster. <laughs> you might dream of a new monster, but what is that monster made of? What you saw in God's creation. Animal heads, animal tails. Cause you, cause you change around a bit, <clears throat> you know, they give you the dice. You can roll seven, you can roll 11, you can roll six, you can roll <laughs> All of us in the dice. <laughs> So the particular order that you threw the stuff in, it doesn't matter. You got it from the dice. <laughs> yes. This is what we have to realize. Now, you want to make progress with your life? You want to get up off of the floor and stand up with the establishment? You want to join the producers? The people that make things happen and shape the future for the rest of us? Then you better take those three steps. Mother nature, human brain, productive life. And you better stay in God's guidance, Islam. Islam. Think as a Muslim. Think respect for mother nature. Know that mother nature it's, it, it, it's, it's just what it says. Mother. So you want to be formed first in mother. That's how human beings come here. You're formed first in your mother. You want to be formed first in mother before you go to daddy. For daddy to educate you or to share with you his trade or his profession or his brain. Before you do that, be sure that you are respecting Mother Nature. Respecting Mother Nature. Appreciating Mother Nature. No great thinker ever got to be a great thinker by just looking at himself or going to the field of work. But when he stopped in the field and rested on his tool, and looked up at the sky so far away from him and began to wonder how it all came about. That was the beginning of the thinker. Beginning of the thinker. Mother Nature. Now we have many mothers, thousands, millions of mothers, so we might have only one Mother Nature. Only one Mother Nature. And if we can accept respect for her to the extent that we start to conform to the instructions of Mother Nature that complement my human spirit my human aspirations as a developmental creature, creature of creation, as an ascending, ascendant creation or creature, when we start to do that, oh, we start to improve our life. We start to get better and better. Look at Muhammad the prophet. He is a living witness. God had not revealed to him but God said, you, he has already lived a lifetime along you. That's what God said to Muhammad. He'd already lived a lifetime among you. That meant that God was saying, I approve of his life before I commissioned him to be messenger. The, the messenger of God to, to the world. Before I missioned him, I approved of his nation. I approved of him as a behavioral creature. 
his behavior was on par excellence. On par with the highest standards. On par with the highest standards for human behavior. That's where he was before I mentioned him. He didn't know anything about revelation. He didn't know anything about God. Only thing he knew is what, the, what, 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 what was around him. Had many problems in it. But he was not one of scripture or one of religious knowledge. And already his behavior was what I want in, in the rest of mankind. So he was the son of Mother Nature, wasn't he? He had lost his father. He had lost his mother. He was an orphan, while yet a boy, about six years old. Eh? That's right. This is history. Well, who, who was raising him? Who was responsible for his excellence? Oh, God created him. Yes, we know that. We know that everything is the will of God. We know that. But what's the, what's the explanation in our perception of history, of human life, of realities? The answer is that he was blessed to have the, a respect for the best motivations in his human nature. In his human nature. And to appreciate the best that, human na that, 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 that the mother nature presented to him. And he was from the Christ family, the Christ tribe. And the members of the Christ tribe were also from the Hanifi people. Hanifi means that it was their practice to try to be as perfect in their nature as they could be. It was their, their nature, even though they were living in a pagan environment, idol worship environment, savage environment. But there were certain ones of them that resisted that, their nature, just like it was. You know, everybody ain't gonna fall on the floor and lick, and lick slime or lick spit and vomit off the floor. You might get some of us to do that, but you can't get all of us to do that. No matter in whose name you say, drop down there and do that. <laughs> say in the name of God, the wookie wookie walker, drop down there and do that. No, some of us gonna say, hell no. <laughs> and be ready to go to blows with you before we do that. Yeah, so that, that, that's the power of the excellence of nature that God put in his creation. So they didn't, they didn't yield to those things. They, they stayed away from those things. And God picked one the most excellent of the Christ people, that they recognized to be the most excellent of their sons. He picked him and said of him, he lived a lifetime among you. And it was you, not me, not me. I'm putting myself in God's place now, you know, as a speaker. It was, it was you who called him the honest, the trustworthy one, the truthful, the sardic, the truthful. You gave him those, those, those names. <laughs> before he was called by God. So this is proof that man was created to conform to the will of God. Doesn't have to have revelation. His own, his own excellence is revealing. The excellence in the environment that God made is revealing, it's revelatory, it's revealing, it has the power to reveal. Man made of sin, flesh is sin. Flesh can't be right. Flesh can't be trusted to go straight. That was the Satan's position. That was the devil's position. Now if we gonna buy that in this world, oh, man is prone to error. And he's going to error. He can't be right. Leave him to his own nature. He's gonna become a, gonna become a sinner. That's not true. Muhammad was left to his own nature. He did not become a sinner. And was in a savage environment all of his life. Huh? Now if you understand the story of Jesus Christ, the same was true of him. He was put in an environment of animals. as a child. But the animal nature did not come into him. 
He survived it and lived to be God's messenger, God's prophet. The Messiah. The anointed. The one who cleans the, the, the dirty society. The one who heals the morally sick. Behaviorally sick. The one who stands up the dead. The mentally dead. The spiritually dead. The morally dead. He became that. So he was the one who had the power to take those who were subjected to the animal behavior. Stand him up in human behavior. And he spoke from the cradle. He spoke from the cradle. When he was yet in the cradle, he spoke. He spoke wisdom. He spoke the will of God. That's answered in Muhammad. In his life. That was already protected and, and on the highest level of human excellence. Before God called him and made him a messenger and prophet. And it's in the hadith, in the sayings of Abraham. He said, they will see Muhammad and Christ Jesus together one day. One day, they will see the Prophet Muhammad and the Prophet Christ Jesus together one day. And I've come to understand that Jesus in his mystery is revealed in Muhammad in his reality. <laughs> Not the Son of God, but God's creation. And isn't that what God said? That's his that's his his rebuttal to those who said that God has a son. No. Say so they are creation of God, not his son. And the and the, the the parable of Jesus Christ is the parable of Adam. And he was created by God without a mother and our father. When Jonah, according to the scriptural story, I report on Jonah's plight or his predicament he was put in. When Jonah finally got out of his predicament, cast upon the shore after he had been thrown off a boat by the storm and swallowed by a fish, a big fish, a whale they say, and then spat up upon the shore and stood out there to dry off. After he dried, got clean and dried off real good, according to the Bible, he said, I have a three-day journey. Three-day journey. I ignored my calling. My calling was to come to agreement and let my life conform to God's will for me as his product, as his creation. I was being called to answer the purpose for which I exist. And I ignored my call. So I fell to bad circumstances. Now I'm free to start all over again. Got a new lease on life. So Jonah said, I have a three day journey. I have to engage the excellence of my nature. I have to develop my brain. Then I can have a productive life. And I won't have to rest on other people's cargo. But I'll find rest on my own labor. Peace to you, Asalaamu Alaikum.